Upon arriving at the royal guard post, the wealthy man and his entourage immediately drew all eyes. They joked and egged each other on, daring one another to provoke the stoic royal guard on duty. Eventually, the rich man accepted the challenge, unaware of the surprising turn of events that awaited him. It seemed like just another typical day at the royal guard post. A crowd of tourists gathered, taking photos of the still guards, careful not to cross the chalk line on the ground. But the peaceful scene quickly changed when a sudden noise broke the calm. It started with a few shouts, then grew louder as more people began to scream. The front of the crowd turned away from the guards, noticing that people were stepping aside to let someone through. A group of four men emerged, pushing their way forward, laughing and joking without paying attention to anyone else. One man stood out. He walked confidently, with his chest out and arms swinging. His name was Britton. He and his friends had seen the guards from afar and immediately decided to mess with them. They dared each other to bother the royal guard and Brighton took on the challenge. Brighton confidently crossed the line the crowd had been standing behind and approached the royal guard. At first, he posed beside the guard, letting his friends snap a picture. But soon, his behavior turned obnoxious. He made faces, trying to provoke a reaction, knowing the guard had to remain motionless. But Brighton didn't stop there. His friends cheered as he continued to behave increasingly disrespectfully, getting closer to the guard and almost touching him before stepping back at the last moment. He turned around to laugh at his friends, but when he turned back to face the guard, a voice suddenly boomed over the crowd's murmurs, stand back for the king's guard. The guard's shout startled Brighton, causing him to take a few steps back. But he quickly recovered, realizing that this was all the guard could do as long as Brighton didn't cross a certain line. The warning confirmed to Britain that he was getting under the guard's skin, which was exactly what he wanted. So he continued his antics, unaware that he was on the brink of real trouble. Britain decided to push his luck even further. He approached the guard again, raising his fists and pretending to throw a few playful punches while making sound effects. Then he turned around with his arms raised as if he had just won a fight, soaking in the cheers of his friends while the crowd booed him. Do your worst. Your hate can't hurt me. He shouted, waving his arms. Do you even know who I am? I'm rich beyond your imagination. I have my own guards because I'm that important, he boasted, dismissing the crowd's disapproval. Britain then moved closer to the royal guard, determined to provoke him as much as possible. The background noises faded as he focused entirely on himself and the guard, but then he heard something that made the hairs on his neck stand up. The guard had whispered something to him. Britain's body tensed, as he tried to make out the words, shaking his arms and legs to regain control of his nerves. He stepped even closer, with his friends still cheering and the crowd still booing, thinking he was just mocking the guard. He took a deep breath, and the whispers became clearer, forming sentences that the guard repeated over and over. It took Brighton a moment to comprehend the words, but when he finally did, he stumbled back a few steps. His confidence vanished, his face turned pale, and fear overtook his expression. Meanwhile, Brighton's mind was racing as he processed what he had just heard from the guard, trying to figure out what to do next. His friends shouted at him, asking what was going on. Finally, Brayden moved, taking his phone out of his pocket. He whispered into it carefully, ensuring that no one could hear what he was saying, and then ended the call. Brighton then nodded to the royal guard, who responded inconspicuously. He gathered his thoughts and took a deep breath before turning around to face the crowd. When Brighton reached his friends, they immediately asked him about the situation. What is going on? Are you too scared to continue? Brighton's friends stared at him in confusion, realizing he wasn't going to explain. However, some people nearby, overhearing his whispers, wanted to ask him what was happening. But before they could approach Brighton for answers, a commotion erupted at the center of the crowd. At first, people jostled each other and a few fell, but soon different voices started screaming. Slowly, an area cleared in the middle of the crowd. Just as suddenly as the commotion and screaming had begun, they stopped, making way for gasps. Move aside. Give us some room. A voice shouted from within the crowd, a voice Brennan recognized. Gradually, the crowd parted, revealing what was happening in the center. Britain's eyes widened at the scene before him, but a sense of relief quickly washed over him. An unknown man was being held down by two large men in suits. Good job, guys he said triumphantly, 
feeling giddy. I knew I could count on you. I wasn't worried one bit. A loud groan sounded, and Brighton looked down at the man struggling against his captors. As you can see, my guards have everything under control. The threat will be handed over to the police, Brighton said, not realizing that things were about to take a different turn. But who is he? How did you know what happened? A question rang out from the crowd. The smile on Brighton's face grew even bigger. He was enjoying the moment. He pointed toward the royal guard and told the crowd, the guard alerted me about the incoming threat. Murmurs spread through the crowd as they turned their attention to the royal guard. Brighton spoke again to regain their focus. The guard knew about my security detail and asked me to handle this discreetly. However, for the first time, the guard's typically stoic and motionless face showed a flash of fear. Then suddenly, the guard tackled Brighton, causing him to hit the ground hard. Get off me, he shouted, frustration dripping from his voice. He had done exactly what the royal guard had instructed. Was this his reward for cooperating? But Brenton's thoughts were interrupted by a loud bang and panic spread through the crowd once more. Brenton pushed the royal guard off to get up and see what had happened. But when he looked in the direction of his security guards, his heart skipped a beat. It appeared that the man on the ground had managed to free one hand and was now holding a gun. The sound had been a gunshot. The man swung his hand around, but the guards quickly reacted, grabbing the weapon. Once the situation was under control, Brighton scanned the area to make sure no one was hurt. Suddenly, he realized that the guard had tackled him because he had seen the danger. Brighton rushed to thank the guard, but the guard was still lying on the ground where he had tackled Brighton. The man was motionless, and Brighton felt his second wave of fear in a short span. Why is he still lying there? Is he hurt? Brighton hurried to him and knelt down, and what he saw made his eyes widen. The guard was groaning heavily, gripping his shoulder tightly. What is it? Brighton asked as he helped the guard sit upright. The guard screamed, and Brighton saw that he was bleeding heavily from his shoulder. He was hit. Brighton grabbed his phone and called for an ambulance. While they waited for the ambulance to arrive, Brighton did his best to stop the bleeding. When the ambulance finally arrived, the guard was rushed to the hospital. As Brighton cleaned his hands, a wave of emotions overwhelmed him. He had treated the guard disrespectfully, yet the guard had saved him. Brayden wanted to go inside with the guard, but the medical officers held him back, forcing him to wait in the waiting room. After an hour, the doctor emerged, his face unreadable. Brayden stayed hopeful, and relief flooded him when he heard the guard would recover. But the doctor's words, it was really close, left Brayden feeling a deep guilt, knowing the outcome could have been far worse. When allowed to visit, Brayden apologized sincerely and thanked the guard, who smiled through the pain, saying it was just part of the job. Brighton disagreed, vowing to change his ways. He visited often during the guard's recovery, and their bond grew. Even after the guard's discharge, they kept meeting, with the guard guiding Brighton toward becoming a better person.